Thanks to video games, we get to do an awful lot of cool stuff that we may not be able to do in our normal, everyday lives. Whether it's exploring far-flung destinations and historical settings, messing about with high-tech gadgets, or simply firing a few shots into the face of an unlucky NPC, video games let us have a lot of fun. You can't have the good without the bad, though, so sometimes games will make us do terrible things in order to advance the plot, and so for this list, we're looking at some of the absolute worst things our favourite titles have forced us to do. Hooray! We will, of course, be talking about major plot points for many of these entries, so a spoiler warning is very much in effect. We also won't be including that white phosphorus debacle from Spec Ops The Line, because as awful as that is, it's been done to death. No, pun intended. There's only so much we can say about the horrors of burning civilians alive, after all. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 horrible things that video games forced us to do. Number 10. Fishing a key out of a cop, Resident Evil 7. If you've ever dropped your keys into a drain, you'll know just how icky it can be to try and get them back. If Resident Evil 7 is anything to be believed, though, there are far worse places to lose personal effects. Fortunately, none of us here at Team Triple Jump have ever had the misfortune of dropping our keys into a cadaver, but even so, we can't imagine the retrieval process is particularly pleasant. If we want the gory details, though, all we have to do is ask the world's unluckiest husband, Ethan Winters. After facing off against the terrifying Jack Baker and his equally disquieting wife Marguerite, Ethan is invited to take part in a game designed by the couple's utterly unhinged son, Lucas. Before he can begin, though, he'll need to find a few items, one of them being the snake key. Sadly, Lucas isn't a fan of key hooks and has instead stowed the key in the body of an unfortunate cop. Players will remember him as the officer that met a sticky end thanks to Jack and a well-timed shovel. Admittedly, sticking your arm into the throat of a corpse isn't the most physically taxing thing in the world, but it is absolutely disgusting! Number 9. Covering up the identity of a serial killer, L.A. Noir. There are a number of things that happen throughout L.A. Noir that put players in a moral quandary, but none leaves a sour taste in the mouth quite like the conclusion of the homicide cases. Following a short but successful stint in traffic, shouty Cole Phelps is promoted to the homicide desk where he's put to work solving a series of murders. Though each has its own suspects, who in turn have their own motives and nothing even approaching an alibi, when the M.O. remains the same for each case, it soon becomes apparent that the murders are the work of a serial killer. After arresting and charging a string of innocent men, Cole and his partner Rusty finally get to find out who's behind the grisly killings. They track down Garrett Mason and are able to shoot the evil git before he can get away. It turns out, though, that the man behind the murders was the half-brother of a prominent politician, and Cole and Rusty are forced to keep quiet about the whole thing. Cole is given a nice, shiny promotion in exchange for keeping his mouth shut, but that doesn't make the whole thing feel any less wrong. Number 8. Killing Sif. Dark Souls. People hate it when animals get the chop in films, TV, and video games. We were all distraught at the end of Turner and Hooch. We shed a tear when Neville's dog, Sam, got infected in I Am Legend, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house at the ending of Marley and Me. Hell, there's even a website called DoesTheDogDie.com that helps people to avoid media where doggos meet an untimely end. It's for these reasons that people were hugely upset when Dark Souls forced them to fight and kill Sif. Located deep within the Dark Root Garden, Sif was once the partner of Artorius the Abyss Walker, who ended up being swallowed by the Abyss. When players find Sif, the big pupper is guarding his master's grave and ring, the latter of which is needed in order to enter the Abyss. As much as we would have liked the game to offer us the opportunity to get the ring by other means, I still maintain that a nice, juicy steak and some scritches behind the ears would have sorted the problem right out, players are forced to fight Sif to the death. Regardless of whether or not it's necessary, though, most of us still felt quite terrible afterwards. He was just protecting his master! He's a good boy! Number 7. Torturing Kerimov, Grand Theft Auto V It's fair to say that the Grand Theft Auto series has players doing an awful lot of morally questionable stuff on a fairly regular basis. We've all stolen a car or two and knocked down an errant pedestrian, it's fairly part and parcel of the game world, but even we were a little shocked to have to torture information out of someone in GTA V. During the mission By the Book, Trevor is tasked with extracting information about Tahir Havan from Ferdinand Kerimov, though his methods are, somewhat ironically, not by the book at all. Trevor does have a choice over how he tortures Kerimov, and you can choose to either waterboard him, beat him with a wrench, shock him with a car battery, or pull out his teeth. 
I'll be honest, none of those sound like a particularly good time. Except maybe waterboarding. I'm not sure what it is, but it sounds fun. Though the torture is unpleasant, it does have the desired effect, and Trevor is able to glean enough info about Havan to allow Michael to identify and assassinate him. It's not exactly what I'd call a happy ending, but I think it's about as close as we're going to get from the GTA universe. Number 6. Saving Ellie and Dooming Humanity – The Last of Us of all the video game duos we've come across in our time, few have quite as touching of a relationship as that of Ellie and Joel in 2013's The Last of Us. Though they're brought together through necessity, they quickly form a bond that only strengthens as the game goes on. Joel is tasked with delivering Ellie to the Fireflies in the hope that they can use her immunity to find a cure for the Cordyceps virus. Once they arrive, however, it transpires that in order to synthesize a cure, the Fireflies need to remove the infected portion of Ellie's brain. Though humanity might be saved, the operation will kill Ellie. As awful as it is to sacrifice Ellie for the cause, especially considering just how endearing she is as a character, the alternative dooms millions of people to death by the virus or lives lived in fear. Joel is unable to let her go through with it, so players are forced to save Ellie from the operating table. Not only does this mean no cure, but Joel also ends up killing a number of people on his way out of the facility, including the surgeon and the Firefly's leader, Marlene. It's obviously lovely that Ellie gets to live, but ultimately, it's at the expense of a lot more people. Number 5. Executing Order 66 – Star Wars Battlefront 2 if you're not a fan of The Star Wars, then you might not be aware of Order 66. It made its first appearance in Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, where the words Execute Order 66 are uttered by Emperor Palpatine, resulting in the deaths of most of the Jedi at the hands of the clone troopers. If you're rooting for the light side, it's considered to be an all-round bad time. In 2005's Star Wars Battlefront 2, players get to experience Order 66 as a clone trooper tasked with wiping out the Jedi that are alleged to be the enemies of the Empire. The mission is made up of a number of objectives, ranging from capturing the Jedi Council Chamber and protecting the library long enough for Command to scan its contents, to just straight up assassinating Jedi Masters, and all of it feels very wrong. Technically, yes, the Jedi are enemies of the Empire, but considering that the Empire is effectively a dictatorship that is threatening to take away the galaxy's freedom, they oppose it for a good reason. I just hope all of you Star Wars Battlefront 2 players can sleep at night knowing that you are fighting on the side of space, Hitler. Huh? Number 4. Sticking a needle into your own eye, Dead Space 2. We've all heard the expression, I'd rather stick pins in my eyes, but when it comes down to it, there are very few scenarios where actually jabbing long pointy things into our eyeballs would be the preferable option. I think I speak for most of us when I say that if I had the choice between having a machine stab me in the eye or knowing less about an evil space monster, I'd probably go with the latter. I'm sure all of the important information is on Wikipedia anyway. Sadly, Dead Space 2 protagonist Isaac Clarke doesn't have Google at his disposal, and the only way to download the data necessary to best his adversaries is by having it inserted into his brain. Even more sadly, the quickest and easiest way to the brain is apparently through the eye, and so players are forced to guide Isaac through an excruciating scene in which a needle is inserted directly through his pupil. That is going to hurt in the morning. Oh, man. It's hard enough to watch when you get it right, but if you fail to align the machine correctly, it goes berserk and poor Isaac ends up killed in a horrifically bloody fashion. And you thought putting in your contacts in the morning was rough. Number 3. Killing the Boss – Metal Gear Solid 3 – Snake Eater You've got to feel sorry for the boss, as oh boy is she dealt a rubbish hand in Metal Gear Solid 3 – Snake Eater. First, she's tasked with infiltrating Volgin's ranks so that the legacy can be brought to America and is made to look like a traitor in the process, and then she has to die for the cause as well. Talk about a rough day. Admittedly, when he arrives at the scene of the, uh, boss fight, Snake is still under the impression that the boss has defected, and so despite the pair's lengthy history, we can fully understand why he's willing to engage her in a duel. It's not long before he finds out her true intentions, though, that she was actually on the side of the US all along, and that she's effectively sacrificed herself in order to prevent all-out nuclear war. Her death stings for a number of reasons. First of all, the boss is a complete badass and a brilliant character that taught Snake everything he knows, and secondly, she effectively saved the world from nuclear devastation but will only ever be remembered as a traitor. Do you reckon we can get hashtag justice for the boss trending on Twitter? Go on, give it a go. Number 2. Killing the Colossi – Shadow of the Colossus Shadow of the Colossus stands out on this list as it is one of the few occasions in gaming where you're forced to do an awful thing, but it isn't until long after the fact that you realise that you're doing an awful thing. The game follows a young man named Wanda as he journeys across the realm in order to try and save a girl named Mono. He is led to believe that the only way to do this is to destroy the Colossi, 16 huge beings located throughout the land. 
The problem is that the Colossi are not the aggressors that players had been led to believe and were, in fact, simply protecting portions of antagonist Dormin's essence. Rather than helping anyone, killing a Colossus means that a bit of Dormin's spirit enters Wanda's body and piece by piece the big bad is restored to full power. Admittedly, both Wanda and the player are misled by Dormin, but that really doesn't make all that much of a difference. After all, you've still wandered the landscape, no pun intended, executing innocent creatures with reckless abandon and have brought about the rebirth of a really, really evil dude. We're not mad at you, we're just incredibly disappointed. Number 1. Cutie's Execution It Takes Two it Takes Two is a game that looks incredibly cute, what with its colourful graphics and its dull protagonists, but anyone who has played it will tell you that it frequently hits players right in the feels. Whilst trying to find a way to return to their bodies, May and Cody make the assumption that because Rose's tears turned them into dolls in the first place, it's her tears that will turn them back. That's right folks, it's time to make that child cry! The duo ventures through Rose's many toys in order to find her favourite, an elephant named Cutie. After fighting through a number of hostile toys, one might assume that Cutie will be the big boss at the end and it'll be a fight to the death. But nope! Cutie is a complete sweetheart that offers Cody and May cookies and hugs. That is, of course, until she realises that they're there to kill her, at which point she begins running away and begging for her life. Players are forced to grab hold of Cutie and drag her, literally kicking and screaming to her death, all while she pleads with them to leave her alone and reminds them that she's Rose's best friend. The whole sequence is harrowing, and if you're anything like me, you'll never want to go back to it ever again. 